Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to explain the relationship between F number, the F stop on your lens, and the energy level that you get from your flash units. Now, I'm going to use predominantly studio flash, uh, but I'm also going to compare the output of uh, various flash units and also uh, a speed light. So, what do I actually mean by output level? Well, on the back of most um, modern flash units, uh, you will have a scale which runs from, in this case, uh, 10 to 2. And what that represents is the energy uh, level that the flash is set to. So at 10, it will give you uh, full power, full energy. So for this particular unit, which is a Profoto B1X, that would be 500 joules. If I then turn that down to 9, that will then give me half the energy. So that would be 250 joules. So if I turn it down again to 8, that would be half of 250, which is 125, and so on, all the way down uh, to 2. So each time uh, the, you make a, an adjustment, a full uh, adjustment of one digit on here, it's halving the amount of energy. Now, that may ring a bell with you, because if you uh, start uh, at a, uh, an aperture, and then you uh, take it up one stop, that actually halves the amount of light entering the camera. If you take it down one stop, that doubles it, and so on. So the two are very closely related. So that's what I hope to be able to show you. So what I have here uh, is a range of uh, different flash units. Uh, on the stand here, I have uh, a B1X. Uh, then we have a mains-powered uh, D2. Uh, so this is 500 joules. Uh, this is 1,000 joules. Uh, and down here, I have um, a generic uh, speed light, uh, which has uh, a guide number of somewhere around 38. Most speed lights don't give you uh, an energy uh, for their output. Um, they tend to still use the, uh, the guide number. But we can use that as a comparison. So what I'm going to do is, using this um, still life setup, uh, I'm going to uh, take some, uh, some images of this uh, together with this color checker. And as I'm tethered into uh, Capture One software, I can use the grayscale on the color checker card uh, to give a, a very accurate uh, exposure level. So we'll be able to compare different uh, F numbers and different outputs uh, from different flash units. Well, that's the theory anyway. Uh, let's uh, give it a go. I'll just move these ones out of the way. OK, so to get started then, uh, as usual, uh, what I will do, uh, just to make sure that we don't get any contamination from uh, the house lights, etc., I'll just take the flash trigger off the top of the camera, uh, and we'll just capture a, a frame. OK, so we can see from that uh, there is uh, no image to speak of. Uh, there, the camera settings that I'm using as a starting point are the sync speed for this camera, which is 250th of a second, uh, and the aperture is set to f8. So with that done, I'll put the flash trigger back on the top of the camera again, uh, and we'll just take a, another image, just at an arbitrary uh, energy level, uh, just to see what happens. OK, so this is a, a little dark. It probably needs to come up by uh, two stops. Uh, so I could uh, increase the energy level from the remote on the back of the camera here. But just to make sure that you can all follow what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change it on the back of here. So we said two stops. So I'll just turn that up to uh, an energy level of seven. And we'll take another one. 
Okay, so this is getting a bit brighter. I think we probably want uh, another stop yet. So I'll just take that up again. There, so I've increased the energy level on the back of this unit from 5 to 8, which is the equivalent of three stops. There we go. Now, uh, in here, um, we can see that these are all pretty good. There's very little clipping going on. I'll just turn the exposure warning on just to have a look. Uh, nope, nothing to, to speak of there. Now, on this grey stripe here, uh, if you watch these uh, little numbers at the top here, uh, you'll see that um, most of the grey is at uh, around 145. 144. Uh, so if we match that level every time, that will give a, uh, an indication that the exposure is staying the same. So now, if I take the aperture on the camera and increase it from f8 to f11, which is one stop, then I need to compensate by adding one stop of energy to the flash. So if I take that up from 8 to 9, and now we take another exposure, I think you should be able to see that this is around the same, 143, there thereabouts. And if I flick between the two, you can see there's very little difference between them. So if I go up another stop to F16, I'll need to add another stop of energy. So we'll turn that up. So now we're on full energy for that unit. There we go. And again, you should be able to see that there is virtually no difference between these. Because each change of a full f-stop on the lens is equivalent to changing one unit on uh, the, the flash. OK, so that's fairly straightforward. Now, I did mention when we first started that this is a Profoto uh, B1X, which is 500 joules. Uh, and I also mentioned that each time you change uh, one digit here, you're actually doubling the amount of energy. So if I were to swap this head out for a 1,000 joule head, then in theory that would be around about one stop change. So let me do that. I'll take this one off, and I'll replace that with a D2, which is twice the energy. So I'll just check that's still pointing in vaguely the same direction. There we go. This is set to full, uh, full energy, so it's on its uh, maximum. So in theory then, if I take the F16 to F22, there should be hardly any difference in the illumination on the scene. And there you go. You should be able to see that this is virtually the same. It's slightly brighter. Uh, that's usually because of the inaccuracies of the um, aperture blades in the lenses. Uh, I'm using a uh, 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 uh, Canon lens. Um, and um, they are notorious for not being particularly accurate at each end, uh, the 2.8 end or the 22 end. But even so, uh, you can see from the images on the screen here that there is very little difference between any of these. So, if I then take this uh, unit down 
from an energy level of 10 to an energy level of 5, that's a 5 stop reduction. So I need to increase the aperture by 5 stops. So that's from 22 to 16 would be one stop. To 11 would be two stops. Eight would be three stops. Five point six is four stops. And F4 is five stops. So we'll give that another go. And there you go. This again is virtually identical to the previous one. OK. So if I just reset this, uh, and I'll just put the uh, B1X back on here. OK, so there we go. We have our baseline there um, at F8 uh, and at an energy uh, level on the uh, studio flash of 8. So what I'm going to do now is turn that up to full. So that's going to go all the way up to 10, like so. So that is 500 joules. That will give me a flash burst of 500 joules. So as we know, uh, because that has now gone up to full, I will need to adjust the aperture accordingly. So I'll take that up to F16. There we go. And we're getting exactly the same result as we did before. So with that at full power, uh, and this on F16, we get this sort of result. So if I now swap this out uh, for a, uh, a speed light instead of a studio flash uh, and leave the aperture exactly the same on the camera, you'll be able to see the difference in exposure uh, between the two. So let's just do that. I'll just swap this out. Now in order to get the, uh, the speed light to work with this system, I've had to attach uh, a, an air sync unit, a pro photo air sync unit, to the outside of it with some sticky tape. So I'll just turn the whole thing on, turn the speed, the speed light on first, just attach that on there, turn that on, and then we'll just pop that on the top of this stand, like so. Check it's pointing vaguely in the same direction. Yeah, there we go. I'll just give that a test to make sure it's talking to the, uh, the trigger. Uh, yeah, that seems to work. Jolly good. So now if I capture uh, another image, you can see that this is uh, down uh, quite a bit, but Considering the difference in physical size between the uh, speed light and the studio flash, it's not as much as you might imagine. So if I compensate by taking off, say, a full stop to start with, so we'll go from uh, F16 to F11. Let's give that another go. That's brought it back. It's still not quite at the same level. This is what we got from the studio flash, so I'll just put a mark on that, and if I just leave the cursor on there, you should be able to see that the numbers on the top of the screen, uh, the grey is reading uh, 141, and then go down to our latest capture, it's reading 122, so it still needs to come up slightly. So let's try another full stop. So we were at 16, we went to 11, we'll go to 8. Ah, 
This is something else that happens quite a lot with, uh, with speed lights. They don't always trigger. So let's just give that another go. There we are. So if anything, that is now slightly over. So since I've got the ability to do third stops, I'll do F10. And F10 is giving a reading of 146, which is very, very close. I go back up to here. 140. That is the reading from the studio flash. And now if I come down to our latest capture, that's 147, uh, which is at uh, one and a third stops. So then, the difference in energy between uh, the little speed light that we've got up here, which has a guide number of about 38 or thereabouts, uh, and this um, Profoto B1X uh, studio flash, which is 500 joules, uh, is about uh, one and a third stops. So you can see from that, in terms of energy alone, um, they're not a million miles apart. In terms of ease of use uh, and uh, quality of image, uh, they are uh, fundamentally totally different. But that is uh, a subject for a future video. OK, well, I hope that was uh, some use and uh, you've got something out of that. Uh, and if you like seeing these sort of things, just click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.